So um, I'm glad to have Io as our featured poet of the evening. Io writes at the intersection of poetry and fiction. He is a chronicler of fictional bands and alternate realities. He has featured at Vaz Sintinta, Moondrop Productions, La Palabra Musical, The Music of the Word, Literary Speakeasy, and the series at Bird and Beckett. He's had poems in Americana, a City College of San Francisco's forum magazine and nomadic press. Uh, he can be found on Twitter and Instagram. Always low key, repping black weirdness. He is more an ellipsis than a period. He is a good, solid voice, a great poet. And like I say, Avacha was the one who turned me on to him, and I'm so glad that we arranged this feature. I am so glad to have you. Welcome him, please, and then we'll get under with. Much thanks, Dan. Um, yeah, it's great to be here. Um, I'll preface uh, my set saying I sometimes say, uh, that yes, I often or well, really usually fictionalize. So what I read may or may not describe something that actually happened to me. Uh, but hopefully, like any good fiction, it'll get at something true. So with that, this one's called The Two Losers Poetry Group for Lizzie. We would call it The Two Losers Poetry Group. We are not hip enough to be a collective, but we write words, string them together in what people say are pleasing ways. Of course, neither of us have the confidence to cop to being any good. What would collaboration mean anyway? I imagine us in a montage, the setting urban, this city's strange pastel density. We are honing our craft, bouncing poems off of each other, speaking rhythms to microphone stands. We trade tapes of ourselves, Laura Shabazz would be proud, finding the imperfections, breaking tape. Of course, it would not be in the two losers poetry group if I had any conviction any of this would happen. We've grown worse at staying in touch. No trips to the grocery store, smoke breaks rare. And it's not this city, not really. I think it's modernity, busyness, too much to juggle. So what if we too understand something about it, the inevitability of our romancelessness? So what if we understand the urge to love, even if we are incapable of it? It is not personal, this apartness, this distance, there is no enmity, but cities are oceans. We swim in them like sharks, mile after mile, searching for our own kind. At 1 a.m., I can imagine the glow of the neon sign, excuse me, glow of the sign on a bus is the lure of a giant deep sea fish ready to swallow us not into further darkness, but to an interfluorescence into illumination on the way home. I'm not sure I've ever learned anything on Muni after midnight. Like the sea, my mind is diffuse in a thousand realities at once. Do you drive home feeling the same? We should write a poem, trade verses. We should learn line by line what it means to be a person. That's why, isn't it? We know each other. We're like the sea, the shifting patterns, invisible waves, each a map of the person the other might be. Your only daughter, your only son. You said I always run away, that the road is in my blood like it was in your brother's. I've run out of land. I sit in the sunset and watch gray waves, watch as if plotting a course, as if I could immerse my body in that sea without a pang of discomfort, as if I could join with it, salt inside and out as they say our bodies are. I imagine it all falling away and merging with the water, slowly traveling, turning around the world, carried like flotsam on slow, endless currents. Why stay when there are other things to see, when there is always somewhere else? Why stay when here means the things I can't solve, means the routine I can't shake? Movement has its own logic, its own inertia, mile calling to mile across the world. I sketch a way out of here, away from her love. You're always telling me loss has its own logic that the people we lose find our prayers. Sometimes I wonder if I am lost to you. Sometimes I wonder if you feel childless. I left as soon as I could. 
your own sister becoming a surrogate parent, my father's brother and my cousin becoming two more. And now I'm across the country, across the continent. Where would my brother have been now? Maybe I follow in his footsteps, a shade of him stumbling through a life he never knew. Sometimes San Francisco feels like an underworld where sky becomes earth becomes sky. But sometimes I want to be lost in that, lost in the way things are. I know I don't call enough, and I know you don't understand how hard it can be to pick up the phone. I know you don't understand the flush, the anxiety. I wish I could call, give you whatever you want to say. This is your only daughter calling for your only son. And what would he say in that brother I never knew? I imagine him speaking the truth. Don't the dead always seem wise? He would say that there was nothing you could do, nothing dad could do, that there is no solace in this last thing in the ways of God, that life was not made for ease, that its struggle cannot be cut from its beauty, that there is no why, only what is. And maybe you could speak for me and I could speak for myself, say, I wish I knew how to show love like I should, wish there were rituals to bind us, rituals beyond those fraught, fraught moments on the phone. I wish for a God I don't know I believe in to bridge that gap. I wish for, for a God to heal the little hurts of love. This one's called uh, Else Worlds. It's for uh, LH, uh, who I invited but I don't believe is here. Uh, and it's set off by these two quotes from uh, Kerry Brownstein. There is a gulf of misunderstanding between musicians and their fans and often so much desperation that the musician can't possibly uh, assuage, rectify or heal. I knew how bottomless their need could be, how I could help them if I would, how could I help them if I was just like them? I was afraid I might not be able to lessen their pain or live up to their ideals. I would be revealed as a fraud, unworthy and insubstantial. One, Try to see this. The train is stainless steel with an orange stripe and a squiggle of letters. Two, I pretend I'm not nervous as the train dips back and forth under pale white light. Tucked into my backpack is a synthesizer. It's what started all this, it and her and the band and you. How did I get talked into this? Why did I think this would be a good idea? Three. Light seems to come from nowhere out here in the fog. It's as if the fog, like an amorphous god, has swallowed the sun, digesting all that brilliance into itself, into a wall like the barest touch of a cold, wet tongue. I light a cigarette and wait, hoping with each chemical breath to be as indifferent as she says I look. But I remember standing in the dark with her and watching you sing, watching your hands on the keys. We've decided we love you. Who wouldn't? You and I, for a few moments at the merch table. There isn't much here, you apologize. The band is still new. New, but already a part of my life. There's not much to buy, but I want to take home some tangible piece of you. A $1 button, a sticker, a seven inch record of only two songs. But I walk home from the bus giddy from the music, only carrying the memory of your voice and the strands of excitement that bind my friend and I, that bind us to you. And this is our solution, this the only way to draw closer to you by starting a band, by, by starting a band, by doing what you do. I'm not, but I'm not a musician. My friend is, she's done this before. Who am I? I imagine how it could be. I imagine that rush. I imagine provoking it. Imagine being on the other side, on the stage and you listening, returning home on the train, remembering my words. Four, what, what do we do to you with our eyes? Our eyes taking in every piece of you. What do they say? Do they speak of our need or do they speak of a love as harmless as rain? And this love bonds my friend and I as I hesitantly place my fingers over the keys poised to piece together notes, to piece together a song. It captures us, ties us to this room, this circle of three. Me and her friend behind the drums, a man I don't really know. He is as foreign to me as I must be to you. 
strange and filled with unknown potential. A one day friend, possible enemy, a, co a competitor for her affection, a competitor for yours, a man whose gaze when turned on me could organ like capture me in a spell of stone. I play and trip over keys, but I think of this as the train. Think of the trains beneath us gaining speed between stations, wind over metal, metal catching light, light reflecting light as swift as desire. And I am no longer in the room, no longer anywhere. I am carried on our music. I am at a show again, listening to your voice, my eyes closed as you sing. And I am in the fog and in the dark underground, feeling the sway of the train, wondering where you are, wondering if there is somewhere, somewhere you listen to me, eyes closed. Five, try to see this. The train is not stainless steel, but silver and red, or blue and gold, or green and cream, or rides on rails in the sun, or is not a train at all. It's a crowded bus. I try to fit these feelings into the words I sing as I touch the keys and think. In one of these worlds, you aren't in a band. In one of the, those worlds, you are my friend. And, he, and there, as here, I missed you. Whew. So my first piece I uh, dedicated to, uh, thank you, by the way, my uh, friend Lizzie, uh, Elizabeth V. Aldrich, known to many as Eris. Uh, she died last summer, way too young at 29. Um, she was a very talented writer, was frankly uh, insane, as she said herself many times. But uh, most importantly, she was one of the most genuine, kindest people I've ever known. Uh, she was from LA, but wanted to be back in the Bay Area. So I try to bring a little of her to Bay Area readings, and uh, I'm going to read a short passage from her book, Ruthless Little Things. Pretty girls with long hair and pretty boys who cry so hard their eyes go from blue to green and red. Ruthless little thing, it's what she called herself, and I felt inferior to her, so I wanted to be one too. The first time she outdid me, I was 16. I walked around the neighborhood feeling raw and open and kept saying things about Buddhism. I was barefoot in my dress from Slow, that store near Westland, Wasteland on Melrose. I was 117 pounds and 5'6" and would later be diagnosed with borderline personality disorder by an ER doctor I barely talked to. In San Francisco, I listened to this Lana Del Rey song too many times, and also this Ravenette song too many times, and Tom wouldn't let me help her, and it made me suicidal. So I took the bus to the hospital, and they told me not to do shrooms like I had done a few weeks ago at a trans party. Uh, I thought it was a trans party, actually in Oakland. There was someone there wearing a full body Domo costume. I loved Domo because I loved getting coffee from 7-Eleven when I was walking home from work at 3 a.m. and he was on one of the cups. I, lo I loved when it was quiet and feeling like I was one with the city. Um, and this is also for her. Um, it's untitled. I feel like Los Angeles will always make me think of you. And October will always make me think of you. And July and San Francisco and Dior and astrology and Hello Kitty and Dark Eyes and Smith lyrics scrawled on a notebook and LA by which I mean the valley and false nails and false eyelashes and the lusty lady and 2012 and 1992 and the word ruthless and 92nd Street and 24th Street in Muni and the Richmond and CCSF and the fog. Um, let's see. This one's called Elseworlds. Oh, wait, no, I already read that. Um, excuse me, getting a little mixed up here. Um, all right, so I sort of alluded to something related to this earlier. Um, we had a fire last month in the building uh, we lived in, um, which put us and everyone else out. Uh, fortunately, everybody was all right, but uh, I've, 
uh, noted some uh, references to flames and uh, things people read tonight. And I recently saw flames quite up close. Uh, but yeah, OK. But uh, we've been moving stuff out, which was especially not fun today. And uh, I wrote this about the fire. It might not be finished. It's called To Flee. In the months you are neighbors, you hear laughter. That's what you remember most after the fire, after the shouts, after the sirens, after the flames lashing out of the window, licking the beams of the underside of the roof. After a while, you wondered if you would ever meet them. They are a presence in the wake of absence, in the wake of the empty space that apartment had become. Strange, isn't it? to live a parallel life and never cross paths, only one wall between you, strange but ordinary at the same time. All lives are parallel now, under the same sun, or continents apart, or cities apart, sharing a commute but never seeing the car every day in the other line, lane, less its driver, never knowing you board the same train every day with one particular person. Parallel now, but in past and future too, sharing the same earth with those who were and those who will be. Every one of us with an ancestor who lived at the same time as an ancestor of everyone else. Everyone yet to come with a predecessor alive right now. That day we find ourselves outside this place we live to see fire, see smoke, see eaves blackened and shattered glass. One there from almost the beginning, maybe one of the people yelling fire, the person you stumble out and see, unfamiliar though, she reminds you of someone you once knew, uh, though it turns out you have been that wall apart. And later her roommate returns, they hug, this is how you know, and you wait with them, temporary companions as we all are, wait with your other neighbors, with your mother. We are all the people, have fled something. We have all in the long lines of ancestry been a people who have seen the way flames come alive, the way they consume. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, I think, yeah, I'll close then with this uh, called In the Sea We Remember. You will fall through 10,000 worlds and fall no, find no comfort in the arms of another. One, in the sea we remember. There is something in the absence of the land that seems to lend itself to this we've left home behind. The trip has its parameters, but there is an air of finality to it. We will go where no one has in a century riding a sea with unknown tides. And yet out here, out here with nothing but water, we recall things from the depths the ocean like time, an ocean between worlds with constellations that change in endless night. Out here, perhaps we are close to a primal state. The first thing was water, wasn't it? Two, you don't know why, but tonight we think of her. We don't even know her name. We both agreed to leave it that way. No names, only the idea of who you were held in one another's mind, only the feel of skin, the brush of lips. You saw each other mornings on the bus under low light. Now you listen to the ship in the, in the dark. Outside beyond our stars, you don't recognize and whole worlds beyond your imagining. You wonder what she would have thought of this voyage. You said something about this, something once about all this, the dars, the ways between worlds, closed for a century. She said she used to dream about parallel worlds and the things possible when freed from history, from what happened, when released to what could have been. We lay together in bed one night talking. She said she wanted that night to last forever, to never go home. She almost wanted the doors to remain closed even as she wanted to see another ocean or an ocean that was and wasn't the Pacific the Pacific, just as big, just as deep, and made of molecules that were nearly identical, but weren't. In some other world, this is love, she said. In some other world, I would tell you my name. Three, now you barely remember her face. The ocean has a way of obscuring all direction, but you remember, you remember that every world can break us, that every history is twined in blood, and what of love? Love will not save us. In the sea, we remember, once we were submerged, creatures of ocean, breather, breathers of air, 
the sun, a rumor of distorted light, the sea, all sensation, memory, the totality of our existence, no beginning, no end. Now breathers of air, we live in memory, memory as time, memory as story. We have no choice, only the pieces are left. So we sit, we tell our stories, tease together the fragments of our lives, looking for a vein, a branch, a fissure that will lead us home. Thank you. Wow, thank you. Unmute, ladies and gentlemen, let them hear it. I love that. What a set. Wow, I am. You're amazing. Yeah, very good. Nice. Beautiful. I thought it was very fine, very fine mm -hmm. and deep. The deepest, soundest poetry. Thank you. Uh, uh, thank you. I, you know, I always love your work. You're an old man in a young body, and I'm yeah. grateful for the chance to hear you. Yes, yes. as always, many thanks, Avatra. <laughs>